Hello and welcome. This podcast is about the evolution. We're creating an actual sci-fi fantasy web series called Forward. And it's about the evolution of humanity and how some people have a vested interest in stopping our evolution. There is romance, there is uh, conflict, everything that you would come to enjoy in a TV show, but there's also a message. So this isn't about the money or the movie, but the message. Um, We have kind of created this podcast out of sequence because that's how the ideas come to me as a writer. So um, what I'm doing is I'm actually creating this and making sort of an audio treatment rather than a written treatment. We are actually writing it down, but we are keeping that uh, to ourselves until we you know, move forward further with the project. But we wanted to share these ideas with you because some of them are so funny. Some of them are so real. And it is just an amazing journey that I am on. I hope that you enjoy. Our website is www.evolveforward.net and www.dreamspace.vision. You can like us on Facebook, Please follow us on Twitter at at Evolve Forward. You can circle us on Google Plus, and we also have a YouTube channel for the Evolve Forward Network. I'll see you in dream space. Make the choice to make the journey. Evolve Forward. Probably why we're sleeping in today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think okay. I I think I reached the end of the story last last night. Yeah. Well. How late we all up? What? How late we all up, honey? Uh. Jesus, what time is it now? Jesus, it's nine. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Okay. But I think it's done. Or at least yeah. all the story that I can tell about it is done. We actually thought up two new characters. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I'm just like, oh shit. Well, we gave Gideon a best friend, another, a male friend. Yeah. Asian dude named Alex Wynn. He's also a computer geek. Kind of, he's, he's co- a little bit cooler than Gideon, but, um, and he won't, uh, he's definitely, um, not trying to evolve, but he's just more interest, fascinated with all the computer shit. And kind of helps Gideon out with that. Yeah. And we also give Delia a friend. Josie. A Hispanic lady. A Hispanic lady who works with her. She's married to a black guy who also gets the mark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So then when, and she actually goes with uh, Delia to the country mechanical bull place. So that they look like they're having, you know, social interaction. So it doesn't look like that she's quite that isolated. Yeah. Right. 
And it's funny because the only one who looks like they're in the right place is Patrick. <laughs> During that scene. And the three of them are like, what the fuck are we doing here? But yeah, that's all That's all we added. And uh, so we've done the treatment. And I think it's I think it's readable. I think that's a good way to to possibly possibly uh, explain dream space or the sexual parts of dream space. Yeah, because some of it is quite racy. And uh, we just have to make yeah. sh- we just have to make sure the actors really do have the the chemistry. I'm really worried about Delia and Patrick because there's got to be a real chemistry there. And yeah, I mean, there's definitely got to be chemistry there. I mean, if they're supposed to be in love, then you know the actors and actresses are going to have to portray that. You know. Yeah. I was talking to Antonio about that yesterday because there's one thing I noticed about uh, in the Celestine Prophecy. Um, two of the main characters who were supposed to be friends, you could just tell from the way they kind of said their lines to each other, it was almost like they didn't, they really didn't like each other. Yeah. Like... Just the way they said their lines to each other, it just it didn't it didn't it didn't come off to me as friends. It came off to me more as okay. Let me do this line and get the fuck away from you. Yeah. I wanted to get more into Delia because um, and we did we actually did some more character development. If you want to listen to some more of the audio, I could send you the links so you can listen to more of the story. Because it gets, I swear to God, it this is hot. It really is. And it just gets crazier. I'm sorry that, I'm sorry that uh, for right now, it's come to an end. And it's not really the end, but I'm thinking like season three. Okay, she evolves. She sheds her human skin. And I'm thinking that season three, she gets sent back because they want more of the others. Yeah. What do you think? Like sending her back to to search out people with the mark and lead them into the... Right. Right, because the government government got too many of them or the people just got lost. And plus, by season three, she's more into her role. She's like... Okay. But the thing is, uh, in the first two episodes of that, she's not feeling it. She's like, I already been there. I don't like it there. But and by this time, America has just kind of really fucked itself. What did they let Trump? Yes, actually. And so you have these huge uh, you have these huge deportation centers where people are sitting like, um, you know, they're sitting in these deportation centers. He's like deported. Like, it's like a mass deportation. Like anybody, any, any person who hasn't gotten themselves, any person who hasn't gotten their paperwork together or it just hasn't come through yet. They come to your homes and then just, it's, and it's like mass. It's it's not even like, you know, where they're doing it like the other two seasons, like just coming to take people out one at a time. Nope. President Trump has just issued a huge mass uh, and now it's sending, and the government is now coming and rounding people up. And I mean, just... And they're not even really taking the time to see if you do have papers. It's like, if you just look a certain way, or they suspect, 
they round you up with everybody else and then you got to try to talk your way back out and this is people with driver's licenses and social security cards and the whole bit and they're still rounding them up so he's rounding up all of these mass people people it's just they're being snatched like right out of their homes right off their jobs just and uh the aliens are like we can't have this plus um also president Trump has now sent a majority of the higher paying jobs to off offshore yeah. So now, well, because of the mass deportation, now nobody is doing those really lower paid jobs. So now they're forcing people to do the lower paid jobs. It's almost like enforced slavery now. So like you'll be an IT manager today and then you'll find yourself as a gardener tomorrow. Because there's nobody, because the gardener person who used to do that job is now in the deportation center and there's nobody there to do it. Yeah. Plus, the racism has just gotten really bad to the point where people are just burning up towns. Riots are everywhere. Like, it's like Ferguson, but in almost every city, it's like that. Folks, are, militias are running around with just no fucks to give. There is no uh, regulation and they're claiming Second Amendment rights, which I'm not against Second Amendment rights, but I am against you're fucking crazy and got a gun. Yeah. Yeah, so the militias are running around. Towns are being burnt up. People are being mass deported. And so they want Delia to, you know, Delia in her evolution state, you know, she's straight spirit and everything. She's kicking back. She and Gideon are enjoying life in the spirit world. It's the best thing that they've ever had. It's the best way you could ever feel. And they spend most of their time in dream space. Yeah. And so her father asked, says, we need to get the rest of our children. And Dilly is, uh, for the first two episodes, Dilly is like, no. For the whole first episode, you just see, uh, of the third season, you just see her and Gideon just kicking back, enjoying life. Still platonic, but they're enjoying life. They're enjoying, you know, they're, they're reaping the rewards their of their success and they have no fucks to give and then in the second episode um her father is like shows her scenes of what's going on down on earth and honestly dear is like you know what i just went through that i do, seriously do not want to go back to that i seriously do not want to go back to that yeah. But then, you know, then she starts seeing the people, you know, the people who were meant to evolve but just didn't, you know, didn't know how to process the information, got scared or whatever it is. They couldn't evolve because, you know, they didn't understand what was happening to them and stuff like that. Yeah. And she starts seeing their pain. She starts seeing... And then Harold, you know, the old man, he did evolve... He, he, you know, he comes and talks to her in the dream space and says, you know, how can you leave him out there? The president is going to be a mess. Nobody's going to, there, there are going to be no jobs to be had except, and they're not, and the jobs that are there are just low paying, low wage jobs. While the people who are really rich, that's the only people you're working for. So they want nannies and gardeners and all that crap. 
it's yeah. gonna be horrible. It's gonna be like slavery again. It was sit- butlers. That's all they want. They want people to simply work for them. In fact, they're the only employers because every other employer has sent all of their jobs overseas. So it's it's going to be horrific. Like, it's going to be like living in slavery, a slave state. Yeah. He's going to slash everybody's uh, SSI, Medicaid, Medicare. People will be dying in the streets because nobody will be able to get to the ho- will be able to afford the hospitals. He'll own all the hospitals, like they will all be owned by him or by a company owned by him. So they will become straight corporations. And if you don't have, if you don't have the money, you will simply die of something like as simple as a sinus infection or, or you know, a cutting on your leg infection. You won't be able to even get medications in the stores anymore. Like yeah. antibiotic cream and stuff like that. What do you think? Well, that sounds about like what we do. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't think we should use his name, though, because, you know, he might sue. Uh, well, no, we're not going to. Of course we're not going to use President we're going to say President uh, I'm trying to think of a name. President Truant. Yeah. It's close enough. And of course there's a double meaning in the word. I think that, you know, don't get too involved in the political aspects of it, you know. Right. The store line. You know, don't over emphasize the deal. Well, no, I, I really don't want to. I really don't want to speak to that. But we have to have an understanding of why Delia would even be called back. Yeah. So it's just it's just gonna be an overview of the world as a mess. Yeah. But we do have to tell that story as to why she would be brought back. Why the aliens yeah. would be concerned enough to bring her back. That that needs to be necessary and understood. I mean, because there has to be a reason. I mean, she evolved. She she and Gideon went on. Patrick went on. Everybody went on. But we have to understand why she needs to come back. Yeah. So, we do have to show that. But, and we have to show that the government has gotten even more evil. <laughs> And that there's a, and people are still there. There's a reason. But the people who didn't involve, you know, if it was just all good, then there would be no reason. But no, I, I agree with you. Let's not rely on the political aspects, though. The po- the politics are what's gonna make it necessary. Yeah. Well, what? We're just going to say, okay, so maybe we need to call him President White, President James, President something else. So it's just not so evident. Okay. Well, what if the president is... Mm, I don't know. I know, right? <laughs> so we got to... But the thing, that, the thing that draws an audience back is because they fell in love with the first characters so we've got Delia Gideon decides to go back with her so we've got Gideon Alex still was is there so we've got Alex but but Patrick will be back Because somehow he will reincarnate. And she'll, he'll come back. He'll be in spirit form, but because they can, because then once he reincarnates and he's dead, 
he is in dream space and he finally can come to dream space with her. So they make love in dream space. How cool is that? Or does it just seem jump the shark? Yeah, that's cool. Yep. Because, you know, in TV, they never really they never really kill anybody off. And they keep coming back. So then she sees him in dream space. And in order to get more people, she has to go to dream space more. At this point, I'm wondering what she is doing to maintain a job or money or anything like that. But that's neither yeah. here. That's neither here nor there. By this point, she has no fucks to give. Because Patrick is gone. Gideon is also evolved. I just wonder where the re where we're grounding this in some reality. Oh, does she meet a new guy? Hmm. No, no, because Patrick's crazy. Even though he's a spirit, he's crazy. What? Patrick come back and haunt her ass. Well, that's what he does, but he makes love to her in the dream space, but then once she meets somebody else, then he just comes back and haunts them and it you know, he's jealous. He starts, you know, making it impossible for them to have a relationship. So I think Delia does go back to Patrick in the dream space. And there in the dream space, she feels safe to be with him because there's nothing else really pulling at her. There's nothing else like that. All she needs to do is grab the people up and get them to evolve. So she's freer to be with Patrick because the menace is gone. Oh... Yeah. Yeah, so the menace is gone, but then I guess we need to get a new menace. Yeah, you gotta have an antagonist. Always, always. So, I'm thinking that the antagonist will be the president. No, because that's jumping too far off the shark. I was just about to say... He, I was just about to say something, and I'm like, no, that's going too far off the beam. Now we're just getting into the woo-woo, the crazy. Okay, so we do need to have an antagonist. It's not going to be the menace. The menace took his daughter. The menace evolved. The menace is gone. Maybe we need a new menace. Maybe this new president has selected a new person. Yeah, someone like a... Uh I mean, for really for an antagonist, I think that <clears throat> it would be kind of interesting if, you know, the president set up a task force of special police to round up all those with the mark. And um, then we could have many uh, antagonists. Hold on. Hold, hold, hold on, babe. Hold on. What? Uh, I've got to record this. <laughs> all right. We're recording. All right, fuck that. Oh, yes. Okay, speak that. Go on, talk that. All right, the president selects a uh, man to form a task force to round up those who are, are gifted with Mark. And um, that way we have a whole force of antagonists that patrol and check people and, you know, but that babe that's what they're doing with the deportation and though uh, with the deportation those of them with the mark are like you know they like look for them they like examine you for the mark and then the special task force it's like okay you come in for your deportation it's like okay you next next 
and then they see the mark and then it's like no you go to this room and they hold all yes yeah so then they that's when they get under the special task force but then there's one person on this on the special task force we need to have one person and either he's really a racist asshole he really is against the mark wait oh my god or he might actually be also someone who's supposed to evolve and he resisted the 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 first evolution he resists the evolution an alien is his father but he's resisting his father like they're having father-son issues so he fights every person against the mark with with the mark because he's really fighting his father because he doesn't want to evolve he doesn't want to go see him again yeah what do you think about that yeah that's good okay tell me tell me some more so we got the task force does yeah, this part yeah. does this person run the task force yeah well have, it'll be just like a military command setup you know you've got your generals your lieutenants and your grunts and all that. Yeah, but these are people on the ground, so these are mainly grunts. So is he running? Yeah. Is it? Does this person run the grunts? Yeah. He's more like a sergeant. He runs the grunts. Yeah. Oh, this is so odd, babe. This, I want to see this show, don't you? Yeah. So he's running the grunts, okay? He runs the grunts. So, let's tell his story. What does he look like? Everything. Okay. Well, he'd have to be older, otherwise, you know, he wouldn't be in a position of power. So, you know, maybe set him in like his 50s. No, 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 no. He's younger. He's younger. He's like Delia's. Well, Delia's not. Well, Delia's about 50. Damn it. Never mind. Okay, so, yes, let's go on with that. So, the president is so evil, he's now set up a true task force. And what? Is, is Delia, like, enemy number one? Yeah. But, see, they don't know she's back yet. <gasps> exactly. So yeah. they don't know why the people that they're looking for suddenly aren't there anymore. Yeah. She's getting See, them out. She, she's helping people evolve. Yeah. You know, and they're trying to track these people down. But she's able to, when she enters the dreamscape, even the, the people that yeah, are, you know, in custody. Yeah. You know, she's helping them evolve to escape custody. Exactly. 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 So she's she's getting them out before this task force can get a hold of them. But then at some point, at some point, Patrick and Gideon, well, Gideon has evolved back with Delia. So he's still doing his computer thing. So he's helping to identify before this task force can get them. No. So the task force gets Gideon and try to torture him. They they hold him. They torture him and try to get him to give up Delia. But they don't kill him. But damn near. Harold comes and saves him. Who? Harold. Harold, okay. Harold, you know, is the elder and everything. Yeah. Harold and Patrick come and save him. Because after he gets tortured, he goes into dream space. They save him out about and and they alert people in the dream space to come and get Gideon out of there. But yeah, they come and get Gideon because they can't get Delia. Not yet. 
what, uh, well, what do you think? I think I want to see this show. Let's hurry up and get it done so we can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I'm serious. It's like every episode is like, oh my god, oh my god. All all I can say every time is, oh my god. Sean and I are developing season three, okay. and it's hot. Let me tell you. Hey, I, I got another idea, real quick. Okay, we're recording. All right, there's a whole underground of people with the mark. Mm-hmm. You know, the, they have, like, safe houses and stuff like that, and that's where Delia stayed mm-hmm. because they recognize her as, like, a leader. Right. So they, they take her in and protect her and keep moving her from place to place so she's not in one place too long for them to find her. That's hot. Of course. That's how they keep missing her, because she gets yeah. to the next safe house. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's you know she'll they'll just look at her and say it's time to go. Boom to the next safe house. Boom to the next safe house. I don't care about getting paid. I'm just wanting to watch the show. <laughs> you know that's right. Okay, so. They're moving Delia from space house to space house because it's become safe house to safe house because it's become even more dangerous for her to be out there once she's come back. Yeah. They got Gideon. They brought him back. And maybe now Gideon is afraid to continue to work with the movement. Or no. No, he's always got Delia's back. Yeah. All right. But wait, what Gideon does is he gets on the computer, hacks into like airports, and sends false passports to where D is traveling. So when the government tries to track her passport or her ID, they say, okay, she went to Spain and really she's in France. You know, something like that. Oh, that is hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god maybe that's hot Gideon's using his computer skills to, to help hide her yeah because and, well I think he starts to I think he he knew from before from the other seasons how dangerous this was but he never himself had been actually harmed or you know or really uh he realizes he's in danger too. And he realizes he can either choose Delia, he can make the choice or make the journey. He can choose Delia or he can just walk away. Yeah, and, and there's another aspect we could do with Gideon to where he's actually putting out uh, some stuff on the internet, you know, uh, short videos of, of the task force we, we got to come up with a name for the task force but uh, you know, showing videos of the task force mm-hmm. and showing promotional stuff for the people who have the mark to see so that they know who these people are what to do and all that what wait what getting in puts out like a podcast i guess you'd call it of, about the task force to warn people Oh, because okay. I thought you. I thought you. I thought you said he was putting out something against the people who have the mark, so that they know where to go get them. No, he's putting out stuff against the task force and the government. Oh, you know, like, an, like an illegal broadcast or something. And because he's a hacker, it's almost like that one. Um, well, they've got something like that now where they um, where they broadcast and it's like, we're going to... Sh- no, 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 no. He shuts them down. He hacks their complete network so that they're shut down. So that they can't even find the people. 
because that's what uh, Anonymous does. Anonymous will shut you down. Like, they shut Ferguson's entire police website down. What do you think? Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. First, he puts out... Well, let's let's do it like this. He first puts out the information. Then he shuts their website down. Yeah. See, that way we're giving Giddy in a more active role. Right. You know, because he's doing all this on the computer stuff. You know, because he's a hacker. Right. Exactly. The, the main way he can help is through the computer. Right. Well, and and he's feeling some kind of way about being uh, being tortured and captured and yeah, yeah. So okay, so Gideon is feeling pissed off because he got captured, he got tortured, and it's more like revenge. He wants revenge. But, yeah, Gideon is pissed because he got, you know, he, he wants revenge. And he's not, yeah. and this is not even about the evolution. This is about, okay, you done brought me into this shit. So, here here you go. In the meantime, Patrick in the dream space is becoming more active because he's getting more people. Yeah, he talked, he talk, like you say, you know, he talks with Diggy in the dreamscape, you know, because she's back in the corporeal flesh, mm-hmm. and he's in the dreamscape, but he talks with her about, you know, how to guide these people, and all, in, into the, the... Yeah, into, into helping themselves out, because President Truant... <laughs> Because President Truant is like, he has no fucks to give. He really doesn't. He doesn't give a fuck about anybody who's not rich or white. He wants all of these people out. And so he's, and he's actively going after these people. And the task force is like, they're pumped up for it for some reason. They're like, it's like I wake up every day trying to get uh that could be even one of the lines. I wake up trying to get ten of these folks out of here a day, so you know these people are pumped up, and the leader um he becomes like the menace, but he's worse than the menace because he has. He has less fucks to give. He has no daughter involved. He has no nothing involved. All he knows is that President Trump is like, has tapped them specifically. And he's more proud of of the acknowledgement and that than he is. He has no, there's no reason for him to even feel any kind of way about the dream space or the people. He really is a sociopath he d- he just doesn't care and w- whereas the menace he cared he came to the other side he had a daughter all of that stuff this guy truly truly is a monster he has he has no fucks to give like he might be like Hannibal or some shit. Yeah, I think an interesting deal on that would be that, you know, he submerged himself in the work because his wife died of some disease or something like that. Oh. Know? So he just put, put himself full force into finding these people and all as a way to distract himself from his loss. No, oh, that is so good. No, his wife actually evolved. His wife went yeah, through the. There you go. That's good. That's good. Yeah, his wife actually went through it, and that's why he hates. He feels instead of seeing it as something, the evolution as something good, he's like, 
took his wife away. Yeah, exactly. So now he's going to kill everybody with the mark. With the he feels like it's their fault. And he doesn't understand. Yeah. Yep. And then the president helps to... Um, helps to kind of push that psychosis. Yeah, that's true. You like it? His yeah. wife died of the mark. His wife died. Well, his wife didn't die. She evolved. Yeah, she moved on. Yep, and he's pissed. So he is now going after everybody. Anybody that he can find with the mark. Oh, hell yes. 159 people visited the site today to listen and download the audio. Damn. <laughs> this is hot. But yeah, that shit is cool. Oh my God. We've got a new protagonist. After the menace, well, you have to listen to this. I mean, Sean is going full in. He is going. Uh, it, I'll to the audio later. Oh, this shit is hot. Is that season three? Yeah, the, this season three, yes. The starting, the starting, yeah. No, we are bringing in new people. That's the first thing that Sean said. Uh huh. I think we should call him Sergeant O'Neill. Sergeant O'Neill. Only yeah. thing is, we have to realize we have to keep it sort of realistic. Yeah. O'Neill is not okay. First of all, he has to have. Okay, is he white or what? What is he? Yeah, he's a white guy. That way, because then how did his wife get the mark and what? Uh, you saying like I can't marry a black woman? I'm not saying that. I just was asking, hey, what is the what is it? Okay, so he's white, so he's Sergeant O'Neill. Mm -hmm. Cause most of most black people with the name O'Neill, either there's a black you know, there's a white person involved or it, you know, we just don't that's not usually our surname. Yeah, I know. So okay, so he's Sergeant O'Neill. Yeah, I picture him as a white guy. I don't know why. It's fine if you do. It's fine if you do. That's that's what I need you to do. Flesh out that character. Okay, so Sergeant O'Neill, he married a black woman. She died because she got the mark, and now he wants to kill everybody with the mark. He doesn't even want to. He really, uh, he Actually. really is. Yeah, he's not down with the president who just wants them rounded up. He wants to kill every one of them. The word he uses is he wants to eradicate. Eradicate. He wants to eradicate. Ugh. Woo. Yes. He wants to eradicate. He wants to tear them down. Okay. So you, his name is Sergeant O'Neill. Yeah. He, he married and, a. And I know this is a straight thought off of O'Neill, but. Uh, we need to have, like, a couple of centuries that the underground was signed to do you. You know, that she becomes com confidants and stuff with. And then one of them is a mole? Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, one of them is, is secretly sending shit to O'Neill and all, but... Oh, shit. They never can quite catch up with them. Yeah. Because maybe the other one kind of gets, uh, I mean, not yeah, after a while. He suspects. And then he kind of gets it that this person is doing that, and then he just, on the down low, keeps saving Delia. Yeah. Oh, damn, this shit is so hot. I, I want to see this show. My, I want to watch this show. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we have to. But this, we have to write it. Hi. So we're doing it. And then the thing, the cool thing is, we're seeing it. We're seeing the show. Oh yeah, I have a very vivid imagination. I can picture all of this. Exactly. You see the show. You're watching the show. 
you watch it as it's being you know other people without the, like antonio he can't see it like we can he can't he can't all he can do is write it all he can do is uh the technical that's why gideon is there because that is all that's what he is there to do and it's an important part and it's necessary so how many see oh, wait a minute how many episodes have we gone into uh, almost five i think uh, i think more than that but let's let's continue okay no because the first episode of the new season is going to be a two-hour show oh i'm telling you we have talked the entire third season just about we're up to like i think five episodes of the third season nice. well the first part of it is you know delia and gideon delia and gideon they uh are you know they're evolved they're happy they're in the dream space harold's still there he's still important but gets actually uh he gets actually elected Ooh. yes so then there's an immediate deportation of all people who don't have their paperwork together who if you if you don't have your paperwork together if your visa has expired whatever they ha- in fact they create now these huge deport deportation centers where they they snatch you from your homes they snatch you off your job and then but then there is this special task force and then they examine you when you come in to the deportation center and if you've got the mark then you oh, go wow. yeah then you go to a special okay you need to go to this room like you they're going to they're going to deport everybody everywhere anywhere it's going to be horrible because then nobody's going to be there to do those lower level jobs so then IT managers are going to be snatched no they're going to be snatched away from their jobs because the only people who are going to be rich are president friends but they still need people they oh, still... use that word? no no i think i think i said truant but maybe we need to go no that's good because we, if we can find someone that looks like or at least acts like I'm very close maybe yeah with two pain, you know whatever. yeah uh, i don't think people are going to see that shit. they're going to be like damn because that's if, the... if he doesn't get elected People are going to be like, damn, is that how he's going to be when he is actually elected? Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, d- yes. The movie will probably sue us, but that's, that's awesome. Okay, uh, he can't sue us if we don't use his name. Yeah, I said, no, we just going to take her on our own. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll get a better weave for our, uh, I, I think I came up with President Truant. Wasn't that right, baby? Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's actually getting so bad now that, like, what's happening in Ferguson is happening all over the country. Suddenly, we've got just militia running around because he's like pumping up that Second Amendment. We got the right to, yeah, exactly. Because, and he's buying more and more of the media so that he's on every station and he's like, saying okay the muslims you know and suddenly they're rounded up for no reason they're just rounded up like the ones who live right here with us yeah people are yeah it's hot yep (laughs) okay so where where oh oh, oh, oh. i got an interesting plot twist interesting Uh, plot twist uh-huh Mm-hmm. They put them in bright rooms with loud noises to try to keep them from going to sleep and going to the dreamscape. Oh, you know, damn. That, that Diggs, shit is they, hot. Once they find out that Diggy is coming into the people when they sleep and helping them evolve, 
they try to keep them awake constantly. Oh, babe, this is hot. The people with the mark, they actually, I, I, I guess, in the de- in in the detention center, they stop them from going to sleep because that's they know that that's where Delia will come and help them and give them information to get them so out. They load them down with uh, psych, psych drugs, right? No, no, they actually do physical things to keep them awake. And they actually, no, they actually do do that. Yes, they're torturing everybody who's trying to go to the dream space. But now, that, and because they couldn't get them in the second season in the dream space, the menace didn't get them, the menace didn't kill enough of them. Now, what they're doing is they're not even letting them go to the dream space. Now they're just physically keeping them up. And if you can't go to the dream space, Delia can't contact you. So she's trying to contact these people and she's trying to get help. And that's where Gideon comes in. Then Gideon just starts getting, just, it's like, these people are, you know, he starts doing his computer hacker thing. Oh, one of the, one of the, episodes is where Gideon himself actually gets captured and tortured. Yeah, I heard you guys say that. And then he actually goes to get revenge. And then he hacks. Not only does he get enough names, but he also shuts down. Yeah, I think I think that, that episode where Gideon comes back for revenge should be called Vengeance or... Vengeance. Vengeance. That's the name of that episode. You got this. Yes. Do you feel where I'm coming from? Yeah. Vengeance. And then Patrick is still around, even though he went um, with Delia. He was actually able to go to Dream Space, and that's where he's trying to help people. Mm-hmm. And, but they can't get there if they can't get to sleep. So... That's why this is a problem. Patrick. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, because Patrick is trying to look for people. He's like, where is so-and-so? Where is so-and-so? Where where are these people? But they can't get to the dream space because they can't go to sleep. So Patrick is out there looking for them. He's like, where where are these people? What? It, why are so many people missing? And again, it's almost like the missing, but it's not. It's the government... Actually, President Trump is a motherfucker. He he is not to be fucked with. He is not to be played with. And honestly, as much as I hate him, he has less fucks to give than Delia. But he doesn't know nothing about Delia. Because Delia has... Well, he, he knows that there's a leader out there helping these people, but he doesn't know who or where... That's why he had the task force, because, you know, he assigned them, hey, find, find this person and eliminate her, or right. eliminate them. Right, exactly. But when I say he don't know nothing about Delia, he doesn't know her. She already did this and evolved. So she's coming back down, and, you know, she has less fucks to give now. <laughs> she's like... I, I was already chilling, and I got to come back down and do this shit. I got you, President, and we're about. To, I'm about to fuck you up. She's stronger. Um, I don't want her like a bitch because I really don't like her um, to be seen in that way. But she really has yeah. less fucks to give because I, you know it's like. How to get away with murder. One thing I didn't like about that show is that um, the protagonist was always angry. Her look was always hard. Uh, It it was always, you know. And, you know, uh, it's almost like, okay, what was that show? What was that show? Uh, There were lawyers. They were lawyers. 
da 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 I, I know that show. It was like back in the 70s. Um, and they made a movie about it, and then they made a show about it. Um, oh, God. I will have to look that up. But it was a movie about... Uh, no, we need to look that up now, because we need to understand that's Delia. That person is Delia. Look up lawyer, lawyer movies in the 70s. Movies or shows? It was both. And it was that old man. There was an old man who was both, he was the, he was. Perry Mason. No, not Perry Mason. Because he wasn't in the 70s. Um, What? Matlock? No, not Matlock, because he wasn't in the 70s either. It was... I don't remember much of the 70s. uh, Okay, all right, but it was in the 70s. I mean, it was Paper Chase. I think that may have been the name of it. Paper Chase. Look up Paper Chase, please. No, no, no. It, that old it, is it an old man? No. Paper, uh, the paper chase. I think is the name of it. The paper chase. Put that in. It was about a. It was about a law student who was going through law school and. It was almost like he was trying to evolve. The paper chase. Do you see that? Well, there was a TV series and a film called Yes, that's it. It's the paper chase. It's the paper chase. And it was about a lot... I think this person is Delia, like a male Delia. Like even he was one of those white people with afros during that time. (laughs) Do you see him? Look at the images. Yes, and he has an afro, a white person with an afro. And it's a cur. Not only is it an afro, baby, but it is a curly red afro. <laughs> it's like, damn. Okay. The paper chase. If you have never seen it, I think it's a show that you would enjoy, and I think it's something that you do need to watch. But the paper chase is Delia. So. And as the show goes on, he grows stronger, and suddenly he has no fucks to give. But let's go on with the third season. So, where did we stop off? Uh, the people being kept awake so they can't reach the strange cave. Exactly. So, what do you want to do about that? I know what I want to do about it. What's that? Patrick. Patrick. Because Patrick can't find them. Then Patrick contacts Harold. Harold can still walk in between. Patrick can only be in the dream space now because, of course, we killed him off in season two. So he's only existing in the dream space. He goes and contacts Harold. Harold start, you know, starts to contact Gideon. And then Gideon actually contacts Delia and says, we need to wake these people up. And she starts to use her contacts. Or, no, we're hiding Delia. Who, who could we be using? Oh, no, no, no. The two people who are her two sentience or her two handlers the handler that's good he begins waking them up okay yeah so that they can start coming back to the dream space or what do you think about that this is 
This is totally yours, your idea. <laughs> no, it's good. But it has to come through so many. It has to, Patrick. Well, only people in the dream space can realize that people aren't there who need to be there, and only people who can come there and come back can kind of go back and forth. So it has to come through that many people. And of course, Gideon, computer geek, and all of that. Of course, he's going to get it, and then he gets it to Delia. And then Delia tells her handler, there are people in the dream space who can't come back. I need you to get them back. And then he looks at her and then he says, what do I need to do? And then she says, whatever it takes. All right. Okay. Do you see how exciting this is? Yep. This is fun, fun. I, actually, this is fun work. Seriously. This is the, the... This is fun, actually, to build a story that you actually want to see. And can you imagine how excited we're all going to be when we actually see this shit come to the screen? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's like... Pfft, Yes. Okay, so Delia says whatever it takes. So then he makes an excuse to the mole, the other handler, and it's like, hey man, I gotta take a piss. And that's then that's when he goes and tries to wake him up. And then he being, he, you know, he begins waking them up and stuff. Okay, so next chapter. Let's go. Okay. These people. Mm -hmm. You know, the underground. Uh huh. They form a raid on one of the the detention centers to free everyone. Oh, shit. Why are they doing that? That don't make no... Oh, hell no. Okay. All right. They form the raid because they just get pissed off? Or why are they forming the raid? Because these people are being tortured and mistreated and all because they have the mark. And, all, and they're trying to bring all the people with the mark into the fold. So, it's just like basically rescuing one of your own. Awesome. And so what happens? I haven't got that far ahead yet. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, no, it, it does. You It takes a lot. It takes a lot. It This really does take a lot of energy and a lot of... Okay, so now we've got the raid. Delia's people actually get sick of all of this that's going on. And they actually do a raid to try and get all the people out of the detention center. Okay, but we have to, we because we have to keep this sci-fi, at some point we have to bring back in the alien, that, all of that. Well, Dean is in constant contact with the alien in the dreamscape. Right, but at some point it has to be like, I think there needs to be a, an episode where she's begging to come back. Right. She goes and talks to her father and she says, I can't do it anymore. I, I can't with this. We need more help. And then that's where we bring it, that where the aliens actually come in and start to help. Where they start to create, because... President Trent, whatever his name is, where we start to bring in some physical help, where it starts to be, I, I don't know, some kind of, I don't know, tsunamis, something, something to distract him from what he's doing. So, she, there has to be, uh, there has to be a point where she says, 
Father, I need help. I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. And then he's like, I got you. <laughs> and then just brings brings down the pain. And then suddenly you just start to see rain everywhere. You just start to see wind everywhere. You just start to see a whole lot of physical stuff happening. And this, I think, will allow some of the deportation people, because it's like a natural disaster, that, then that's how they're able to escape, because then it destroys the, the, you know, the deportation center. It starts to, then they start, they can get away. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, because we need the aliens to to get in here and um, fuck shit up. Because I mean, look at look at what's going on, and we need to fuck shit up. Yeah, exactly. And the people that because but everybody that needs that gets the mark and that needs to go over, they're trapped in the and then they are not able to go into the dream space to even understand to get the information downloaded to how to do it. So. The aliens are like, you know, psh, this deportation mess, I'm done with it. And they, they, I won't say they blow it up, but they blow it up. But through natural, natural causes, because that's, they work with nature. They're not going to set things on fire or anything like that. They're just going to send a natural disaster it's gonna tear up the deportation center and the people are going to be able to escape back to their homes and then that's how another way that they'll be able to get to the dream space yeah so at that point that's when the Aryans meet with the president oh oh ooh oh okay here I'm gonna let you talk to and begging the Aryans yeah, because he lost. Right. You're recording all this, right? Yeah, I'm recording. You know I got it on. Let me see. Babe, I don't think you're recording this. No, I think I am recording it because I took the call. It will be recorded. Trust me. You've been talking for two hours? Yep. Good Lord. Yep. All right, so basically, at this point, um, um, you know, the Aryan race, uh, the Aryan alien race, um, which is a, a theoried um, a race that people think that is an actual true alien race. Uh, we're we're going to bring a lot of those aliens, like the Greys. We're going to bring back the Greys and the Aryans and all that. They are, yeah. they are meeting with the uh, president, and um, the Greys, of course, you know what the Greys are. Yeah. Okay. You know they. Oh, okay. You know they look just like uh, the 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 aliens you see um, on different sci-fi uh, or 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 uh, UFO shows and all that. Big old eyeballs, skinny bodies. And then the um, Aryans are blonde, blue eye, you know, like Viking type people. They're very tall, um, and so they they meet with them and uh, or with the president because the president's like, we need some help. You know, you the Greys have been protecting Earth from uh, this race that we don't know their name yet. The race that brings on the dream space. Oh yeah, we right. Can't, you can't they there without a name. They they have yeah. a name. Trust and them. it's like so the president's like, well, who are these people? We don't know we don't know who these people are. All we know is they do exist. Or these beings. These who beings. beings. You know so they're not people. They're not humanoids. Right. You know, all we know is that they exist. You know, but we don't know much about them. And it's like, what do you mean? You're just like, you know and so it's hard for him to understand because it's um you know, he, I guess he feels that anybody who travels space are evolved, but that's not true. It's just the next step in evolution. It's just um, 
these these beings uh, or these races just found out a way to travel the stars. That's all. It's just it's no big deal, you know, to them. Yeah. You know. So um, yeah, that's my. What do you think? Yeah. Babe. Well, I think in the third season, we'll have the resources to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's possible. But then, I don't want to turn this into, you know, space breaks, aliens. I, I mean, I don't want to turn it into the woo-woo and the crazy. It's, oh, it doesn't have to be crazy. Yeah, but how are we going to write that not crazy? Doesn't it sound crazy to you, Sean? It depends on how we write it, you know. But it's, I mean, but he doesn't understand that. You can't help it. You though. can't help it. It's, it's you. You can't stop it from happening. Where is the beginning of the turn into twenty-four? And uh, Sean. Sean. I can't. I can't really make out what she's saying. What she say? Oh, okay. Here, here, baby. Hey, let me, uh, let me. I gotta finish yesterday's audio because there's a lot of editing involved. There's a lot. Cause I know, I know. Okay, so I'm thinking at some point, Sergeant O'Neill does see his wife, but it's toward the end of the season. Yeah. He does see her again. I mean, he never goes in the dream space. But somehow she's able to come out of dream space and see him again. It's just like Patrick and Delia at the end. Yeah. So, he. well, at some point, do we want him to turn against the president? Or do we just want him to be just... Well, when she comes back to him, and uh, she, she basically says, you know, look, I've seen what you're doing, and... You're wrong because I'm at peace. <gasps> and that's when he begins to come around. <laughs> that is amazing. Yes. I but but let's be careful. Do we want every every antagonist to turn or do we just want him to be straight evil? Because well, maybe we need him to be straight evil a little bit more throughout the thing. But at some point, he needs to understand. I, I, I get you. His, his wife is at peace. And wait, no, 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 no. Get this. He actually meets with Delia. And Delia explains dream space and then explains evolution to him so that he finally understands that his wife is at peace. Yeah. No, what do you think about that particular episode? Because <coughs> maybe it would just be too much that his wife would come to him. Delia yeah. is a... Yeah. Delia is able to come in and out. Or maybe it's Harold. Because Harold is able to come. Maybe it would be cooler if Harold came out and talked to him. Because Harold is the elder. And Harold is... Yeah. I, I don't know. What do you think? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think Delia would risk going to him herself because, you know, he's trying to kill her after all. So yeah. I think it would be more re realistic to have Harold do it. Because, of course, Harold is protecting Delia. Yeah. So Harold will come out and talk to Sergeant O'Neill. And he needs a first name. Yeah, I haven't thought of that yet. 
Okay, O'Neill. There are very few names that are associated with Irish people, so. Actually, O'Neill is a Scottish name. Whatever it is. Uh, there are very few names that are associated with that that could actually make sense. Nicholas? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, Nicholas O'Neill. Nick O'Neill. Nick O'Neill. Yeah. Nick O'Neill. Okay, that works. If, if it makes sense, but we, I want to keep it authentic. I don't want it to be like, how in the hell Nick O'Neill? Because people will get on fan fiction boards and they'll get on, you know, Twitter and they'll get on social media and be like, Nick O'Neill, that doesn't even make sense. They, and they will actually spend an hour talking about the name instead of focusing on any of the plot or anything. They'll be like, why did she name him Nick O'Neill? But Nick O'Neill I like. So yeah. our new so our new antagonist is Nick O'Neill. And Harold actually comes and talks to him and explains to him, Hey, look, your wife is at peace. And she was beautiful. And what Nick is upset is that he can't come to the dream space and be with him, be with her. And so Harold and him talk and they have a conversation and he just says, you really can't come to the dream space. And then, you know, Nick is like, but why did they take her? And then Harold is like, she was always meant to be there. Hey, what time is it now? 11.29. Oh, hell no. Oh, my God. Okay, we have been going at this for a good two and a half hours. Yep. Um, but I the story still needs to be told. I mean, you got some stuff to say, and we need to get it out. I didn't even have... I said, when I called you this morning, I said, I think the story is over. But the story is not over. I keep... Like you, I keep wanting more of the story. I keep wanting more of it. I keep wanting to see it. I keep wanting to experience it. This shit is hot. Right? Definitely. Damn. I I keep... And... and, Okay, now we got Nick O'Neill. And now we're at Harold. And Harold's... Oh... I want to see that scene. Oh, shit. Hold on. Antonio doesn't even know about this. Okay, so we got a name for the sergeant, the new antagonist, Nick O'Neill. And that's the sergeant that's with this special task force that is going against Delia. But in the end, it's Harold. Who tells him, this is why you can't be with your wife. So we're talking about yeah, Nick. I was, thinking, I was thinking about when Harold goes to O'Neill. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I, okay. we are recording. Go ahead. Okay, the alien mm-hmm. gives Harold a short burst of energy so Mm -hmm. Harold can actually show a little bit of dreamscape to (gasps) O'Neill so So he can see his wife yeah damn what do you think of that damn that's like oh do that yes exactly so he can so he can get his closure so he can get his closure. Exactly. But this is what we were thinking. Okay, he sees his wife. He gets the supposed closure. But the end of the third season, you see him say, I'm still going to kill them all. 
Boom. Yeah. He's still going to kill him because he's still... Because he can't still get to his wife. He can't get to dream space himself and he can't do it. So. Yeah. I so need to watch, be watching this show. Yeah, no. <laughs> You're mad that this isn't on Netflix? I love the way that the alien comes down. Because Harold has been acting as a father for Delia all this time. And the alien couldn't actually be her father. You know, couldn't... So, Harold has stepped in as that role. Then he gets the ability to show O'Neill his wife. And he still says he's going to kill us all. Yeah. Well, that's just because he's an asshole. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but we need to flesh O'Neill out. We need to flesh the character development out. So tell me more about Nick O'Neill. Uh, no children. Couldn't have him. His wife died. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. She evolved while she was yeah. giving birth. And both her and the child evolved. Sounds good. Yeah, that makes him even... That's why he's even more pissed off. And that's what makes him so psycho. I mean... Okay, the wife dies. He could get another wife. But the wife... But the, he, she was pregnant and they both went. To the evolution. Yeah. And now he's he fucked up crazy. All right, tell me more. I'm working on it. Mm. Let's see. Mm. We need to develop Delia in the third chap in the third episode. By this time, I don't. I was meaning to ask you: Does she go back to her original appearance, or does she take on a new form? No, she's always Delia. Okay. Yeah, she doesn't change. That's why Patrick can recognize her in the dream space. Well, in the dream space, I would think they would recognize their energies more than they would physical appearance. Yeah. But no, she takes on a physical body because she has to come in and out of the dream space. Yeah. So she can't come out as just spirit energy. Nobody's going to recognize that. Yeah. But in the dream space, we see what we want. You know, and I don't think um, human beings are ready to see spirit energies trying to have sex in the dream space. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're ready to see Patrick and Delia doing it, but I don't think they're ready to see uh, Delia in her dream. And in order to actually, and remember, in order to actually exist on this plane, on this earth, you have to have the spirit, because that's how you evolve. You have to, you have to shed the shell. So you have to get another one, and she looks just the same. Oh, uh, what, did you think it was an interesting, uh, interesting plot twist if she looked different? Well, I mean, I just didn't know if she would go back to her original form when she took the poor little... No, you know. no, she has to. Because people won't know her as Delia. And I think we would spend too much time trying to explain, I'm Delia. Yeah. Because remember where they've done that on TV shows where they've gotten another actress and yeah. uh, and then they have to spend so much time. It's like, who are you? And then you spend like episodes trying to explain, I'm, you know, I'm Delia or I'm whoever. 
like when they kill okay let's look at this and joss whedon i think he's just a genius he is brilliant when he killed buffy off buffy came back as buffy but he had the perfect segue he he knew that he was killing buffy off so they created that buffy bot and it looked just like buffy so and then so there was no problem with any of the anybody who is she what is this but the move where the shows where they have tried to change the actress and then they say i'm so and so they have to spend so much time explaining and every character is like who are you what are you you know and then that's the whole you know most of the whole plot is who are you (laughs) and i'm so and so and then they spend so much time proving who they are they're not they're not actually doing what they're supposed to do so no i don't want to put any energy into that okay so cool yeah Ow what I uh, my fingers between the chair and the dresser. Okay, so we've got this angry SWAT team or a special unit or whatever they are. See, I don't know a whole lot about that. I think that's that male energy that you need to tell me about. <laughs> so, like... Wait a minute. So are they somehow um, like infused with something that makes them, you know, like a secret drug that makes them just go out and start killing like they like they're mindless automatons because they've been infused with a drug. And that's part of the Aryan nation doing that. The Aryan, the Aryans give the president a drug that will make this special force just go out and kill. And their only mission is to get people with the mark. What do you think? Yep. No, no, no. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. It's not just yep. Well, I'm I'm thinking, baby. Okay. I love it when you're thinking. Okay, it can either be a drug or somehow during their training to become part of the task force to get brainwashed, you know, like hypnotized and they have... No, 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 not hypnotized. Let me finish, let me finish. Uh, Okay. Where they have certain uh, key words that make them react a certain way. Kind of like maturity, the maturity, I I don't know, the... Maturian candidate yes but i'm thinking it comes during you know how like we all get injected when we first come in it just comes to the injection so it just looks like oh it's normal injection okay all right candidate and then you know they hit you up but then that's when the crazy starts happening Because then it's not so nefarious to actually hypnotize and blah, 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 and all of that. That takes us down a different road where it just becomes too much of the woo-woo. This is the reality. If you go into, you know, you go into the army, any kind of military, you get injections. But what they've done is they've gotten the CDC to create something to make them crazy. Kind of like Agent Orange. And they already did that for real. Well, Agent Orange didn't make you crazy. It made you have skin cancer. No, it made you crazy before it made skin cancer. Skin cancer was fortunate a casualty of war. And they knew that that was going to be the result. They knew that you were going to die at the end so that nobody nobody could talk. And those that did try to talk about it were then taken to the research facility 
but for the most part they inject you and angel agent orange did make people crazy it made them like killers without thought it really did they didn't get it completely right but they've gotten it right now agent orange didn't work and they got rid of every i think they've gotten rid of everybody if they haven't if they're not homeless on the street they put them in a facility they you know they've gotten and so nobody talks about agent orange anymore do you know do you notice that and the people who were talking about agent orange they got rid of them pretty quick and nobody during I, the Iraq war nobody during um, Desert Storm really talks about what we were injected with how it, how it got down and those of us who do either we're smart enough to be silent or we get taken out so the same with these uh, special agents they get injected when they come into the candidate thing and it's slowly and then it will just it's almost like you know how you have certain i don't know uh i'm gonna say uh i don't okay like you want to kill flies so you want to kill the flies you put up a strip it injects them or you know they stick to the strip and then it just all kind of disintegrates that's the way it is with the drug that we're being injected with we don't even get to evolve and so the government doesn't have anybody who's going to say anything because most of the people who would say anything are already dead because it is constructed to kill you it's uh, what is it self time self you know it's it, it's constructed to kill you yeah so that you don't have time to say anything you do what you're supposed to do so the the SWAT team or uh, I know you didn't call it the special agents go out there they kill but by the time they get ready to do anything or they, that they could say what's going on with me they're already dead it's like self-destruct self uh, uh internal self-destruct that's created into what they inject so the government never has to worry about the task force ever coming back on them and that's why they select all these people they take they take the injection they do the job they kill the forwards or as many of them or try to find them but then before they can say anything or start to feel any way they actually self-destruct yeah so yeah they self-destruct and they're actually creating that and that's why that's why Delia can get away so many times because these people self-destruct before they can get her but oh 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 Nick O'Neill refused to take the injection yeah that's why he doesn't self-destruct but everybody on this special ta task force they get the injection and they are designed to self-destruct which is why they can't even get to, they get enough of the forwards trust me but they don't get they can't get to all of them and they can't actually complete the mission because they self-destruct before the mission can be done because president truant has enough money he's so rich he actually can pay the cdc to design something that will self-destruct the people yes. 
and they have they think they're just getting a normal even when we were in the military we thought we were just getting normal injections no these people are actually being injected with self destruct injection I took that wasn't normal was the adrenaline shots. Uh, no, I took that gamma goblin. That shit wasn't normal either. Sorry. Yeah. Nah, hell no, that wasn't anything normal. It hurt. Hurt like a motherfucker and it's not cool and uh yeah. And the, but then when uh when uh okay and then one candidate asked what is this? And then the person who's injecting says, you really don't want to know. Do you want to be part of the team? And then he sticks out his arm to just get it. Like, ask no questions. I so want to see this. I so want to see this show. Oh, my God. God, I want to see this. Ugh. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Are you excited about this, babe? Yep. Well, no. Are you excited about being a part of it? I just want to see it. <laughs> being a part of it is kind of a bonus. <laughs> but you just rather it would be on Netflix so you could just click on it and see it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But this is how this stuff is made. Okay, so I have to go and tell Antonio the next part. Oh, 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 okay. This is hot. This is hot. Wait a minute. They actually have, because of what they scraped off Adelia, they're trying to make it, it's like a synthesized, it's synthesized, you know, whatever came off Adelia. And that's what they're injecting into the candidates and into the special team. And that's why they self implode. Because it's not the same thing. They can't get to, they're trying to get people to the dream space. And so the doctors are trying to get people to the dream space. So they've injected all of these candidates, hoping one of them will have the DNA to get them to the dream space. But all they do is self implode. And that's what, and that's why they can never get the people. That's why they can never get all the forwards, because it's because it's synthetic. It's not the the genuine article. They don't have the you know they don't have the knowledge or know how. But they've come as close as they think they can. And so basically, all of these people are test monkeys. And instead of, they're trying to make them get to dream space, but instead they just self-implode. Yeah, like the get back part of them. What? Because... Like the, you know, they, they don't get the desire to pay from... Well, striping, you? Exactly. And the thing is, they get the doctor, and they kind of, the doctor, um, they kind of force him or make him or, you, you know, it's like, we need you to, we need you to recreate this into, you know, something that can be, for, you know, some kind of genocide, and they can't do it. He can't do it because... It's alien. And he doesn't have the exact alien for formula, but the doctor is being forced like, we're going to kill you if you don't create this. 
So he spends a whole lot of time trying to create this and he creates the best that he can do. They kill him anyway, but he creates the best that he can do. And then what he creates is what they, um, you know, inject into the soldiers. Which is why they self implode. Oh my goodness. Antonio, you need to hear this. <coughs> Antonio, you need to hear this. Well, it's recorded. It is, it is. I know, it, we're recording it, but we want to hear it because you may have something to say. Okay, okay the special SWAT team. They're actually all in, injected like we are in the military. Yeah, about the artificial injections that they give after the people. Right. And it goes against them. Well, they self-implode because they actually are trying to recreate the alien, the mark. They're trying to recreate. So they get the doctor that scraped the cells off the mark, and they get him to try and recreate the exact they they are trying to recreate the mark and they can't do it so they get the doctor that first saw Delia and they like basically say you need to recreate this or we're going to kill you and then everybody on the special smart team is injected with this and that's why they can't get to the forwards because they self implode it 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 kills them because it's not the exact if they don't well they don't have the DNA number one and it's not the exact code mm -hmm. so every time when they try to get a forward it, it it's gonna kill okay. them anyway okay, okay. Uh, let's let's say that you know once they get injected with the deal they can live for a certain amount of time but right. when they try to go through the fever because they know like the mark the fever kills them <gasps> The fever kills them. They, because they start to experience, the, they start to experience everything, the fever. Some of them can't. They don't get to dream space. No, they never get to dream space. They can't. They just get the symptoms. Exactly. They get the symptoms. Two times four. It, they get the symptoms of the fever. They get the symptoms to try to get them to dream space because they're trying to get, they're trying to get that special team to dream space. Instead of trying to get one person because the menace didn't get everybody, they're like, we're going to get a whole team to Dream Space. Mm -hmm. And none of them can get there. And then they start to go through the fever and they start to experience all of the, you know, all of the symptoms, but they can't live through it. Like some of the people who, if you're not meant to live through it, you're, you're really not going to live through it. And, and that's real talk. The fever is horrible. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, my God. Season three is going to be even better than season one and two. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because my favorite is season three of the Gill. Oh, my God. This is good. This is good. Because we could, you know, because he's such an asshole, one of the running jokes could be calling him Dick O'Neill. Because he is a dick. Yeah. Like, you know, some of the, uh, some of the candidates are like, you know, I'm Sergeant Nick, uh, Dick O'Neill. And they kind of say to each other, yeah, Dick O'Neill. Coolness, 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 coolness. I'm thinking at this point okay so her friend Josie is running the safe houses because her husband died of you know well didn't die he evolved but now she's trying to help the others because that's what she yeah. promised to her husband before he evolved that Help the others. Come here. Come here. There's one right 
Okay, we are with Josie, and we're with we're with Josie. We're we're with Delia. We're with the Underground. Okay. I'm trying to think about Delia and the Underground. Because there needs to be a little bit more interaction, don't you think? Yeah. All right. Let's get to it. What's the interaction? Also, we need to think about Patrick. How is he helping the followers? Is he like an organizer in the dream space now? Is he like a top organizer? Yeah, he's basically receiving the recently evolved. Okay. Explaining it to him and, you know, guiding them. Okay. How is he doing it? Well, since he's no longer in the corporeal state, you know, you know, he's constantly in the dream state. Right. So as they come through, he... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I just thought of something. Because this, I'm telling you, this has set it off. He and Delia actually have a wedding in the dream space. And Gideon gives her away. Okay. What? What do you think? Yeah. Or they can all marry in the dream space. No, but people love wedding episodes. Like, they love that shit. Yeah. Wedding episodes are a hit because the chicks want to watch the wedding. And, of course, something always pops off. So, the men want to look at the pop-off or something happening. What do you think? Let's talk out the wedding scene. Because they weren't able to... They never married in the real state. But they never... Their engagement was never off. He left, but they never called the engagement off. They never did anything. She was so busy, you know, trying to evolve, all that other stuff. They never really talked about that. So, they get married in the dream space. Okay. Though, I'm not sure how you have a non-corporeal husband anymore. <laughs> Does that seem a little over the top? A little. I mean, but in the dreamscape, he's real to her. Yeah, they they really make love. They He's real. He's really helping his followers. And they never really stopped loving each other. And they still, even in season three, they continue to, you know, they make love, They all of this stuff. And they're at, actually, their relationship kind of finally settles itself to the point where they can be lovers and things like that. Yeah. Come on, talk to me, baby. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Do you feel some kind of way about that? Do you think it's just too woo-woo or... No, no, it's good. But... Come here. Come here. Who presides over the wedding? What do you mean, Harold? Okay, come on, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. More story, more story, more story, because I'm recording. Well, I'm thinking. Mm hmm.
And this will be, okay, because for the third season, we haven't really had one feel good. Not one. Mainly, it's been Nick O'Neill. It's been the, the kid, you know, the trainees. It's been this special team. It's been, it's been all of that. We haven't had one feel good. This could be the feel good. And plus a game changer and unexpected. But during the wedding, Mhm. You know, I mean, just to throw a plot twist in. We always need a plot twist. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> you know, one of the people from the task force actually has the mark, enters the dreamscape, and tries to disrupt the wedding. Oh, hell yeah. Because even though he's on the task force, he has the mark. Right. Which he has tried to hide with, like, makeup. He tries to cover up his mark. Yeah. On the daily. Nobody knows he has the mark. If he did, if they knew he had the mark, then he might become, like, menace number two. So he's like another mole. He does, he finds himself in the dream space. He sees Delia and because, well, because he's been one of the only ones, because remember we were injecting them with the fake DNA and all of that stuff? Yeah. He's like only one of the few that could survive it. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting plot twist. This is another one who never took it either. He never actually got the injection. Because he already had the mark. But, you know, he made an excuse. uh, I can't take that or, you know, okay, I'll come back later for my injection. Never gets the injection because he knows he already has the mark. So that enables him to go into the dream space. And then he's able to give uh, Sergeant O'Neill, you know, all of this extra information, like trying to raise himself up the ranks. Right, right? Yeah. So he's trying to raise himself up the ranks and he's trying to, you know, so... At the wedding scene, you first see, you know, you see Harold walk up. Then you see Gideon walk up. Then you see Patrick walk up. And then you see Delia. And then you see all of the forwards, like, following behind her. So then at that point, you do realize it's a wedding. And uh, because he's got to be able to take out more for, you know, it can't just be them. And then you see him start trying, taking out forwards. Then Patrick, of course, he's fucked up crazy. Well, he's not fucked up crazy, but he is quite crazy. So, of course, he's going to protect Delia. Gideon also throws, well, Gideon throws Delia to the ground so that the forward can't take her out. Patrick comes packing to the damn wedding anyway, and then starts going after the forward. After the, after the, uh, second mole. Yeah. Damn, that's tight. What do you think? Yeah. That's like, you recording all this? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. But, okay, so does the wedding ceremony actually go through? Do they actually get married or do they don't? 
they don't at the first attempt, but then they do a private ceremony. Oh, that's hot. Because, you know, chaos ensues during the first ceremony where they had everybody invited and all this other stuff. Right. But what they end up doing is kind of like a midnight ceremony. Yes. Yeah. Oh, damn. I see it in the forest. And nobody's dressed yeah. up and nobody else is there. Oh, that shit is tight and romantic. And then they consummate it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But while they're doing it, unbeknownst to them, that one mole person actually sees them. And rather than disturbing them, he goes back and tells Sergeant O'Neill. Yeah. Because see, once they're married and they consummate, they become a stronger force together than they were apart. Exactly. Oh my God, yes. That's exactly it. That's exactly what I'm saying. So now, Patrick is even a greater force in the dream space, and it allows Delia to be able to be stronger to go out out of dream space and get the rest of the forwards. Yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> the fact that his force is not doing not doing it quick enough. President Truant just gets more pissed off. And he's like, I want it done. I want them gone. I want this, you know, what have you. Yeah. Putting pressure on Nick O'Neill. And then Sergeant O'Neill is like, you know, the information that he got from... I don't know. Now we need to name this character. Who is he? We got to do the character development. We have to. We have to flush him out. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. I'm thinking. Um, I'm thinking. Uh, his name is Lamar. Lamar. Okay. And he is like one of the few black. You know of the of this special squad but he's really really light skin maybe even light skin enough to pass where nobody even thinks he's black yes no I'm sorry, I was thinking. Oh, okay, no, go. Go, go. All right, but Lamar has a conflict of interest because his wife has Lamar. <laughs> what does he hope to achieve, though, by killing everybody with the mark? Why, why is he trying to kill the forwards? His wife is one. Because he can protect her by being the enemy. Lord. He can keep her name out of it. Oh, that's his whole motivation. Yeah. Oh, it's hot. But is somehow his wife going to get in the dream space and start to... And start to... Because they both have the mark. Lamar has the mark. That's how he was able to get in and fuck up the wedding. Yeah. But does his wife start to come in and, like, work against him? No, he plays the, the two-face. You know, with her, he's... 
basically yeah, protected protecting her from getting found out protecting the government from finding her out you know yeah mm mm-hmm. oh greater greater motivation her wife the wife has the mark yes but then they have a baby and they find out the baby is born with the mark And because this will piss Nick O'Neill off because his wife and his baby were both forwards and they evolved together. And that's why he's pissed off. But then Lamar is like, I'm not making that same mistake. I'm not telling anybody about this bullshit. And I'm going to kill this forward dreamscape, this whole situation. I'm going to blow it down because... I don't want what happened to, you know, to Sergeant O'Neill. I don't want that to happen to me. Yeah. Okay, so we need some more male energy, some more violence. So where's the violent scenes? I don't do that well. Hey, I came up with the girly stuff, the wedding. (laughs) Okay, more violence. I don't want more violence, actually. I want more of these people to evolve, and we need to just evolve shit. No, the people with the mark. Remember when I said they raided a... a Oh, yeah, that's where we were at when we stopped. The raid. And we never got around to the raid. See, that's where your violence for, you know... Well, no, it's Josie. Josie is up... Well, I won't say upset, but... Josie is the leader of that particular, of the underground and all of that. And she actually is saying, is actually is the, you know, leader of that raid. So, let's talk raid. Okay. They go in, and... We can do it one or two ways. We can do it where they don't kill anyone, but they do, you know, beat them into submission or whatever. Well, remember we said in season one and two, you you can't really go, you can't evolve if you're a murderer? Yeah. Okay, so they're not going to kill anybody. Oh, no, this is, oh, so they're going in after the special team, right? Yeah. This is where the special team starts to get the effects of the medicine and starts to just self-implode. Yeah. But the raid is in there and, and then it's, you know, people are, people are fighting, people are against each other, but they start to self-implode on their own. Josie has no fucks to give because she's not going to get the evolution that way anyway. So, work out that scene. How do you see it? Hmm. I see Gideon mm-hmm. using his computer skills mm-hmm. to hack into the, the, the he and, Yeah, he and Alex. Remember, he's got, now he's got his very smart Asian yeah. friend. Yep. They, they hack into the, the center's uh, security systems and mm-hmm. start opening doors so that our crew that goes in to rescue them has open access. Oh, hell no. Oh, this is so... This is so tight. Oh, my God. This is more interesting than watching Netflix. Mm. Okay. So they do that. Yeah. And what do the forwards just start coming out to? And is this what special? Well, the forwards are a little confused at first because you know the doors all open. And they're coming out of dream. They're coming out of dream space. Yeah. And then they they get you know they get the underground people start saying, "Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on!" 
Mm-hmm. You know, we gotta go. We gotta go. Mm-hmm. And they moved them into the the underground system of you know different safe houses, different mm-hmm. motels, different you know just yeah. Because one of the uh, one of the people that has the mark. Mm-hmm. And is working with the underground. Mm-hmm. It happens to be a Texas oil millionaire, so he's helping them fund it. Oh. Well, wait a minute. Maybe not an oil man, because... Maybe not an oil man, but, you know, something like that. Well, no, he's, he's you know... Maybe he was a former IT millionaire. One of the people that has been moved, you know, because of the mark. Okay, oil yeah. or, or oil man. We could say he's an oil man. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, Lamar. His wife. He moves his wife and child through that through there to a safe house. That's how Lamar. Yeah. Yep. He gets his wife and child to to it. Okay. Lamar Brown. Lamar Brown. Lamar Brown works. Agent Brown. Well, uh, what? What? You know what? I'm going to speak to Pepsi about their packaging. But, babe, Sean and I just came up with some hot ass shit. Wedding. A wedding? Mm-hmm. A wedding. Because Patrick is able to, he's corporeal on, in the dream space, mm-hmm. and Delia is able to go in and out. And they never broke up their engagement, he just left, but they never broke off their engagement. Mm. They actually try to get married. Well, they left together, but she came back. Well, no, I won't say she came back. I'm going to say they got back together. Oh, but he's a human being in this dream space. Uh, yeah, he's corporeal, but only in dream space. So, yeah, they've been getting it on in dream space. Uh, father what? Whose father? He controls dream space. He does control dream space, but he wants Delia to be happy. And Patrick has come has become like a leader of dream space and the the people and leading the people. But he doesn't convert over. No, he never goes back to the dream because he was his physical body was killed. Mm. The aliens allowed for him to go to dream space as a gift too. Gideon got the normal evolution. Right. Patrick could not. He never got the mark. He doesn't have the DNA. But he did protect Delia. But he has to stay in dream space. So what he does is he helps all the forwards in dream space get acclimated, get, you know, get this. That's what he does. So he becomes the leader of the dream space. Okay. So Because Delia has to go back, you know, and keep going back. She needs to, somebody needs to lead it. Meanwhile, her friend Josie, because her husband makes the evolution, becomes the leader of the underground where we're hiding all and the folk. The exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And Delia just keeps moving back and forth between each. Mm. So, um, a wedding show is always a really big hit. You get a lot of people who want to see a wedding, especially we've gone back and forth and back. We're in the third season with Patrick and Delia, and people will be like, shit or get off the pot. But they try to get married. And remember, we were talking about that special unit. One of the members of the special unit actually has the mark that he's been hiding with makeup. Mm. And he never took the shot that they gave him. So he, because he already well, knew. Even if he took the shot with the mark, it wouldn't affect it. 
It would only make him stronger. Oh, that's a good good plot twist. He takes the shot knowing he already has the mark. Yeah. Mm. But this um he and he's one of the young agents. And what he's doing, he becomes like the menace too because his wife and his baby he has his wife has the mark. But then they have a baby that has the mark. And in order, he's like, I need to protect my wife and my baby. Right. That sounds good. So, but the wedding episode, Sean, you want to tell him about the wedding? I'm thinking... the The wedding gets rated, basically. I mean... The wedding gets rated, basically. And it's not like your typical wedding. It's not like you know, something traditional. Though she does wear a dress like the dress that Zoe wore mm. when her husband died. Mm. And it's not even to... And Harold is actually presiding. Because I'm thinking more and more Harold is like Shepherd Book. Hmm. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So, um, but then Lamar comes and tries to take out as many forwards as he can. Gideon actually, you know, protects Delia, throwing her to the ground and throwing his body on top of her. And, of course, Patrick is going batshit. And he just goes out, starts, you know, goes after the... Hello, Alex. Goes out after the guy. Hello, Alex. But he he tries to take out or get the names and get the faces of as many forwards as he can. And actually just tries to take them out. Because remember, Sergeant O'Neill lost his wife and his baby. Um, the government gets a lot of the people with the mark that they go to the dreamscape. Mm-hmm. And they hook them up to computers to monitor the dreamscape. Keep them against the will. Yeah, that, they go to the, that's how they end up in the research center, yes. They're trying to, but then they just, they understand the DNA will not allow them to go. Yeah. Okay, and after, I'm thinking like after the wedding, and after the wedding fiasco, because they actually do get married. But they do it privately in the woods. They just exchange rings, and then it's a love scene and all of this other stuff. But unbeknownst to them, because of all the you know all the fuck up with the first one, mm-hmm. then they just meet in the woods. And Patrick is like, "Hey, still want to get married?" So they do actually have a private ceremony in the woods at night, and they actually. Yeah. And they consummate everything, but un- unknown to them, this guy is watching them. Lamar. Like that. And then he goes and tells Sergeant O'Neill. Hmm. You know, Miss Meow Meow, you really starting to become a problem. I love you, Willow, but for real, for real. No. Go take your evil face somewhere and stop fucking with Little Jack. Okay, so that, that she went right over to Little Jack. Poor Little Jack. <laughs> so let's hear your ideas, Antonio. Mm. I think um, because Patrick can't change over, mm-hmm. that Delia fills out, finds out a way to uh, make him reborn. That's a different uh, alien creature. What, she goes and tells her father, but then, what, is he going to reincarnate and then she's married to a baby? No. Yeah. And then then she says, I'll see you in 10 years or whatever. Uh, no, that, no, 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 no. I think, no, having him as the leader of Dream Space works for Delia because then Delia doesn't have to stress out about going back and forth there's somebody leading dream space there's somebody leading the underground and all Delia has to do is the work that she needs to do as the leader to bring all of this together 
Exactly. I mean, you just can't do everything. Oh, little Jack. Oh, uh, little Jack is upset. He probably needs to go over the fence. And he's wearing the harness, so he probably can't fit. And plus, the cat is keeps fucking with him, so he's trying to get away from the cat. Mm -hmm. Evil Willow. God, that, God, what is wrong with that cat? It's your cat. My cat? I don't even like cats. That was supposed to be your cat. <laughs> anyway, she's our cat now, so we have to deal with the evil. She need to go sit down somewhere before she be a barbecue cat. And that's straight up. She'll be skinned and put right out on one of them grills. We got charcoal. <laughs> Okay, so, with this, with Delia and Patrick getting married, Gideon and Alec, wait, do we make Gideon, well, no, because he's been in love with Delia. Because well, I was about to make him, I, no, I was about to make him and Alex get together. No, he and Josie get together. Her husband evolved. He's gone. Yeah, but Gideon bombs too. With whom? At the end. At, what? So what do you mean? Oh, okay, what are you trying to say? Gideon and, and Delia never got together. Oh, I know that. But, um... He's not involved with anyone. No, but Gideon passes over. Yeah, but he comes back too with Delia. Have you not listened to that? Okay, then he gets with Josie. Right, so then he gets with Josie because both of them are working for... Oh, here's an idea that I thought about, though. Okay, speak it out. The, the last show that we were thinking about is mm -hmm. the second end of the second season. Right. But here's here's the catch. When Patrick is standing there looking at his wife, or, or girlfriend still, Pat's fiance, over, fiance mm -hmm. about to be uh, transformed, Mm-hmm. And um, Gideon's there, of course, with um, with um, Delia, right? Mm -hmm. So Gideon gets the gift. He right. goes with um, with her. Mm -hmm. Patrick is sitting there, sitting there, and after that whole thing, and they're totally gone. Mm -hmm. Like they 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 changed to the other dimension. Mm -hmm. Patrick's just standing there. He's wearing shorts. Mm -hmm. Oh wait a minute, he doesn't. He, he's not. He doesn't get the gift, right? No, he dies. He actually physically dies. Oh, the government comes and shoots him. Right, and then remember he's walking off into the sunset holding Delia's hand? Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, yeah. that's how they're able to get Patrick to the third season. No, he actually died, and that's why he cannot come back out of dream space, because... They don't keep him alive. Right, and that was a gift from her alien father. 